U.S. can immediately change the situation in Kharkiv region by lifting the only ban. The United States of America is able to quickly change the situation in the Kharkov direction if it allows the Ukrainian army to fire American weapons into Russian territory. This opinion was expressed by George Barros, an analyst at the American Institute for the Study of War, when commenting on the White House ban. The Ukrainians cannot confront the Russians until they cross the international border, the Wall Street Journal quotes him as saying. According to the analyst, the United States is able to immediately change the battlefield in the Kharkov region if this ban is lifted. The current situation allows Moscow to transfer troops and weapons to the front much more effectively than in other regions where they have to disperse and camouflage positions behind the front line. In a recent interview, Volodymyr Zelensky said that the authorities have repeatedly asked American leader Joe Biden and other partner countries to give permission to use their weapons for such attacks. According to Western media reports, the White House is against this. The Pentagon says it has not changed its position on this issue. This week, a group of congressmen signed an appeal to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin asking that Ukraine be given permission to strike Russian strategic targets under certain circumstances. Two weeks after Russian troops crossed the border to open a new front in the Kharkiv region, the offensive stopped in the town of Volchansk, less than 10 kilometers south of the border, and in Lipsy in the southwest. Military commander Alexander Sirsky announced this. The Kremlin's new front forced Kyiv to rush soldiers into the country's northeast, depleting reserves as Moscow stepped up its offensive in the east. Deep State, a mapping service maintained in collaboration with Ukraine's Ministry of Defense, has shown no significant advances by Kremlin forces as part of the Kharkiv offensive since Monday. Sirsky said that the Russian military command was sending reserves to support the local offensive, but to no avail. Fighting in the eastern region of Donetsk intensified as the Kremlin gained momentum, using its advantage over Ukrainian ammunition stockpiles and manpower. Moscow's forces have advanced near the strategically located town of Chasov Yar, which they are seeking to capture at any cost, Sirsky said. Ukrainian paratroopers on US strikers repel Russian attacks from all sides. Forbes at the beginning of 2023, the United States transferred almost 200 striker combat vehicles to Ukraine. Almost all the equipment was received by the new elite 82nd Airborne Brigade of the Ukrainian Airborne Forces. Now they are fighting in Volchansk. According to Forbes, this is the first time these armored fighting vehicles are used on the battlefield for which they were created. We are talking about urban battles. Amid the fighting in the north of the Kharkiv region, rumors began to circulate that the 82nd Airborne Assault Brigade was in a hurry to strengthen the garrison in Volchansk. Recently, the fighters confirmed their deployment in new positions. Video from UAVs and helmet cameras shows Ukrainian paratroopers entering the battle in the center of Volchansk. One soldier even fired an anti-tank missile from the striker's open top hatch. The goal was to take defensive positions and hold off the enemy, one of the paratroopers said in a separate video. As noted, Fighters on these armored fighting vehicles should avoid direct combat with a Russian mechanized or tank brigade, especially in open terrain where heavier tanks and tracked combat vehicles can apply their superior firepower at long range. Last year, the 82nd Air Assault Brigade entered combat for the first time against entrenched Russian mechanized forces in the open fields of southern Ukraine. The brigade lost at least eight of its armored fighting vehicles, which Oryx analysts were able to verify. With the southern front stabilized and the Russians concentrating their forces in the east and north of the cities, the 82nd Air Assault Brigade was finally able to fight in advantageous terrain. In an effort to pass through Volchansk to clear the way to Kharkov, the new northern group of Russian army forces began infantry assaults. Assault groups, usually up to platoons in size, engage in combat operations with a strong point before combining with other assault groups. This reduces losses when approaching the target, but slows down the pace of advance, explained the Ukrainian Defense Center strategies. Platoons of Russians were scattered across the urban gray zone in the center of Volchansk, blurring the front line and forcing Ukrainian striker crews to engage in 360-degree combat. We held a perimeter defense. They came from all sides said one of the paratroopers. Fortunately, strikers are suitable for round-robin combat. These vehicles make good platforms for surveillance and shooting, and the sensors and weapons mounted on top make them difficult for invaders to sneak up on. 
More importantly, each striker carries an entire squad of nine infantrymen. Thus, a group of four AFVs can deploy a full platoon of nearly 40 infantrymen, something that the heavier, less capable M2 tracked vehicles cannot.